For a few minutes, we're going to talk about the innominate bones. I have my thumb and my index finger through the obturator foramen. Uh, singular would be obturator foramen. So I want you to say obturator foramen. Obturator foramen. The whole bone is oftentimes called innominate bone. Say that. Innominate bone. Coxal bone. Coxal bone. Hip bone. Hip bone. The ilium, the ischium, and the pubis all embryologically unite in the acetabular fossa, which receives the head of the femur. On the front of the innominates is a very prominent feature. This is the anterior superior iliac spine, and I just want you to say ASIS. ASIS. Okay, anterior superior iliac spine. And this is the anterior inferior iliac spine. I want you to say that, that name. Anterior inferior iliac spine. Looking at a left innominate bone, extending backward is the ischial spine. Everybody say ischial spine. Ischial spine. And this is a clinical of clinical importance because the distance between these two spines is critical. The baby's head in a delivery has to be able to clear these, has to be, come, has to be able to come out through there. And so this is a measurement that's taken in an obstetric gynecologic setting to determine if the baby will be able to exit out back are the articular surfaces for the sacrum and the sacrum normally fits in the back kind of like this and of course where my finger is that's where the coccyx would be located that your tailbone extends downward in the back are the posterior superior iliac spine so i want you to say with me psis psis the top of the innominate is called the crest of the ilium say crest of the ilium crest of the ilium Notice in this model that the that the the pubic angle would be rather acute. If we were able to measure that, that would indicate that that this is possibly a man. The pubic angle in a female would be more obtuse like this. And so from a forensic standpoint, that's how person will be able to look at a, a skeleton and tell if it's male or female. That's an easy way to tell.